Hey everyone, AYBL Main here. I uh, want to try to catch up on these videos a little bit. And most particularly because I'm at my graduation year. I'm at 1987. These are the top five albums for every year I've been alive. This is actually year 19. I know I didn't graduate at 19. I graduated 18. You don't count the year that you were actually born um, toward that number. So I know it's a little confusing, but we're at year 19. The year is 1987, and these are my top five albums. This one was a special one because what I did was I reached out to my sister, uh, Melissa, and I asked her to list her top five albums, and then I would compare those to my top five albums. And what I was really hoping for here was that we were going to be vastly different, and I was going to get to make fun of my sister a little bit. But oddly enough, what happened was we had a great deal, a great deal of similarities in the choices that we had, and I was really surprised by that. Um, I think only our top album of the year was completely different. All the other four albums were exactly the same. So on both of our lists are these albums. Uh, the first one is Bruce Springsteen's Tunnel of Love. It's actually one of my favorite Bruce Springsteen albums. Uh, I think Brilliant Disguise is a fantastic song. It is well written. Uh, I think he gets a little bit more sincere with this album than Born in the USA. Um, I know that was his big breakout, but Tunnel of Love kind of dialed everything back into just being a good musician again, and I think it's a strong album. Also in uh, my top five and her top five was Fleetwood Mac's Tango in the Night. Now, a lot of people are going to argue that this was a Lindsey Buckingham solo project, and it really was because he spent a lot of time in the studio actually putting this thing together and using a lot of production uh, stunts to uh, create the album. It very much has his stamp on it. So, I mean, it's got Big Love and Little Lies, which were big hits. But also check out Welcome to the Room, Sarah, um, You and I, um, Little Wonders, all good songs as well. It's, it's, a, it's a very tight album, and it was on both of our lists. So now we're two for two. The, the next one that we had was Prince's Sign of the Times, which... I don't think it's Prince's best album because Purple Rain is his best album. But it has my favorite song by him on it, and that is the title track. Sign of the Times, I think, is his best song he's ever written. It is incredible. It's also got uh, his duet with Sheena Easton, uh, You Got the Look. Uh, very good. It's a, very, it's a longer album for him, but it was very tight, very well produced. You definitely should check that out. It was on both of our lists. Also on both of our lists... Uh, was R.E.M.'s Document, which I'm very happy that that happened because if my sister had not picked an R.E.M. album at some point, I would have been really upset with her. She knows how much I love the band, and uh, she, she picked this one. Document, to me, had a lot of personal connection. I was in the military at the time. Uh, I was you know going through basic training, and I'd always fall back on this album to kind of like recenter myself away from the military lifestyle, and it was great. The one I love, and it's the end of the world as we know it, of course, are the big tracks from it. But also check out some of the lesser-known tracks like King of Birds. They do a cover of uh, the Meat Puppets, Strange. Um, they, uh, there's Finest Work Song, Disturbance at the Heron House. All those are really solid tracks. It was their last album that they had with IRS Records, and they didn't disappoint. It definitely earned them that big contract with, uh, with Warner Brothers uh, going forward. Here's where we differ. We get to our number one albums. I'm going to give you hers first. And I'm not going to knock on it terribly. Um, she picked Michael Jackson's Bad. And that's okay. I mean, this isn't obviously his best album. I, you know, Some people will say Off the Walls is best material. And some people are going to say Thriller because it was the most commercially successful one. This is actually not a bad album. I mean, Dirty Diana is great. Uh, Man in the Mirror, I think, is a really solid track. Like she said, she said it best. It was a little bit more ballady than Thriller was. You know, it didn't really market in the same way, but it was still a very solid album. And I think that it, because of his commercial success with Thriller, it just really bumped the value of the album uh, up higher than maybe uh, it should have been. Um, so it's not a bad pick, sis. I'm going to give you props for that, uh, but it's definitely not my number one. My number one was U2's The Joshua Tree. I think that the first three songs on the Joshua Tree are just absolute killer tracks. 
I mean, you are sucked right in with those first three tracks. I mean, where the streets have no name. I still haven't found what I'm looking for, with or without you. Other great tracks, obviously, uh, is uh, uh, Running to Stand Still. Um, the red red mine red mining uh, one uh, I think is very good. I don't I'm, I don't know why that escapes me, but every track on there is a solid track. The whole album is great. Daniel Lenoir produces it. It's it's a uh, just an, a masterpiece. It's an absolute masterpiece, and that was my number one. So hey, good job, sis. You got it really close, and we kind of connected on that one. Okay, so going on to the album that people told me that I would love. But I actually didn't. I got to tell you, it's a band that people said that I would love that I actually actually have listened to three albums of theirs and have not connected with any of them. It's Dinosaur Jr.'s You're Living All Over Me. That's I listened to that album twice. I couldn't actually even narrow down what genre this band is actually supposed to be in so that I could generate a connection with them. I, I don't like the material. I think it's noise rock at best. And that's not really my thing. So uh, I can't find a Dinosaur Jr. record so far that I've managed to like. So if you guys got any comments down below to let me know which one I should be listening to, I'll take it into consideration. So that's 1987. That's our best, uh, both for Melissa and myself. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you on the flip side.